Hello everyone, welcome to Physics Pathfinder. Today we are going to cover a topic which is an application of mechanics and especially it's an application of conservation of momentum. So let's see the topic, application of conservation of momentum on a hovering of a helicopter. Basically, we are going to understand the physics behind the hovering of an helicopter. Before we go into the concept, let me remind you to like and subscribe my channel and press the bell icon for daily. Let's start with the definition of hovering. What is hovering? Hovering is basically the ability of the helicopter to stay in one place in midair, neither moving up or down. It's going to be stationary. And this ability of the helicopter to stay in one place is called as hovering. Concept of overing is basically the application of conservation of momentum. Hence, it's very crucial for us to understand the application of conservation of momentum. How does it happen in the hovering of an helicopter? Let's begin with the concept of momentum. What is momentum? Momentum is basically the product of mass and velocity. And what is conservation of momentum? Conservation of momentum has certain assumptions. And the assumptions are the system that you are considering should be a closed system. Closed system means there shouldn't be any external forces that are acting on this system. So for a closed system where external forces are zero, total momentum is always constant. This is called as conservation of momentum. To understand the mechanism of a hovering of a aircraft or the helicopter, we need to have some basic knowledge of the parts of an helicopter. So let's see some important parts of an helicopter, which includes, first is the primary rotor blade, which is actually going to function as the airplane wings, which is helping you to adjust the angle of attack. So more the angle of attack, it helps to take the helicopter at a higher altitude. Lesser the angle of attack, it helps it to descend. So you can actually change the angle of the rotor blades and hence control the ascent and descent. So basically it helps in controlling the altitude and direction of the helicopter. The next component is basically an engine. This turbo shaft engine, actually supplies power to the rotor blade and all other onboard systems which helps in the working of the helicopter. Next is a tail rotor. A tail rotor counteracts the torque generated by the main rotor, thus allowing the aircraft to have stability and controlled flight by preventing unwanted rotation. Next, what you see is a transmission or a gearbox. The transmission and the gearbox is basically a connection between the engine and the rotor blades. It delivers the power from the engine, which is a high-speed engine, to the controlled rotation that happens in a rotor blade. It is a link between the engine and the rotor. Last but not the least, there are two controls called as cyclic controls and collective controls. Cyclic control helps in influencing the helicopter's direction, while collective controls help in the vertical ascent and descent movement. Now we can understand the mechanism. The mechanism is controlled by the rotor blade action. What does a rotor blade do? The rotor blade gives an airfoil kind of effect which means you can bend the blades in such an angle such that you generate a high pressure below the blades and a low pressure area above the blades. So high pressure, fast moving air is below the blades and low pressure, slow moving air is above the blades. So this pressure difference generated gives a lift to the aircraft. So it always flows from high pressure to low pressure. So there's a lift, which is an unbalanced force generated because of this pressure difference. And hence, there is a lift that is generated on the helicopter. Now, tilting the blade little, 
will help the helicopter move forward in a desired direction and the angle at which the blades are rotated helps the helicopter to have the ascend and descend movement. Thus, just by changing the direction and angle of the rotor blades, we can control the ascent, descent, and movement of the helicopter. Now, how is conservation of momentum applied here? Conservation of momentum is applied here in such a way that you can see the rotor blade pushes a gushing of air below the blades. So there's a force that acts downwards, which is an action. So if I apply Newton's third law, for every action, there is equal and opposite reaction. So there should be an counter force, which is generated in the above direction by this gushing air that is going down. And that air, which is the green color arrow that you can see in the figure, is the reaction to the action of the air gushing down. The rotor blade pushes the air downwards which is the action, the air exerts an equal and opposite force on the blades, pushing the helicopter upwards, which is the reaction force, according to Newton's third law. Thus, there is an upward force, which is a counter force to the gravitational force, that is the weight of the aircraft. Now, in way, if the pilot can fine-tune and balance this upward force in such a way that if the upward force is equal to the force of gravity, the helicopter will attain stability and can be in equilibrium in air. And thus, we can see the essence of a helicopter hovering relies on the conservation of momentum, where the downward airflow offsets the gravitational force and thus the aircraft or the helicopter can stay in equilibrium in the midair. So this is the concept of application of conservation of momentum in the hovering of the aircraft. Hope you have understood the concept. If you have liked the concept and you would like to see more videos like this, do like and subscribe my channel and press the bell icon for daily updates.